Hi, my name is Nick Pfeiffer. I'm a marine ecologist and I'm here today to tell you about the unique marine wildlife and species that we have. So join me as we journey around the coasts of Connemara and the Aran Islands. Hi guys, well I hope you enjoyed my introductory video. All of that that you saw was filmed within the area that you can see on the map in front of you. So within the area from Galway City out as far as the Aran Islands and north as far as Slinehead. Not everybody realises that Galway's coastline is estimated to be at least 700 kilometres long. County Galway is also host to the widest range of marine habitats of all the coastal counties in Ireland. We have tremendous biodiversity that includes marine mammals, sharks and rays, fish species, marine plants, invertebrate creatures and seabirds. My aim is to give you an appreciation for the ecology of the marine life of County Galway. A great way to do this is by showing you photographs and videos of the marine life that I've taken off the Galway coast in recent years. As you know, some creatures are only found in very particular places. We'll learn about those and we'll also learn about some others that are liable to show up in the sea anywhere at any time. So what marine habitats do we have in County Galway? Well, we've quite a few. Our most precious are our marl beds. Marl is a type of red seaweed that forms a hard bottom. It's associated with very high biodiversity and we have lots of it in Connemara. Another habitat we have a lot of is seagrass beds and actually Connemara hosts the largest chunk of our remaining seagrass beds in Ireland. We have a lot of reefs. Reef is any kind of seabed that is hard, made of bedrock or boulders, or sometimes even the remains of other creatures like oysters. We also have sandy and muddy seabeds, and they're valuable because they're host to a unique set of animals. Our largest habitat is our open sea habitat. It extends right across the ocean actually, and down to its deepest parts. So let's learn a little bit more about each of the habitats in turn by looking at some photographs and videos of the animals that typically are associated with each one. So let's start off by looking at marl beds. A couple of years ago I was involved in a project whereby we mapped all of the marl beds around the coast of Ireland and we produced a set of maps. Here are some for the marl beds that we mapped in County Galway, beginning with Manon Bay. 
and these are mirror beds quite close to Galway City. The next map shows a series of mirror beds in Kilkiran Bay and these are just some of them but the important point is that Galway is host to most of the mirror in Ireland. Of all our marine habitats, Merle is the one that's associated with the highest biodiversity. There are literally hundreds of animals that have at least one part of their life cycle associated with Merle. Merle is very important for maintaining our biodiversity. And it does this by offering essentially shelter and refuge, as well as foraging opportunities for a whole host of species. These may range from burrowing anemones right through to crabs, sharks and rays that lay their eggs there. In this image, you can see how many burrowing anemones there are amongst the merle. Here we have a pipefish, a relative of the seahorse, commonly found in merle beds. Also scallops are frequently found amongst the merle. And here in this image, you can see hundreds of tiny, tiny, tiny little crabs. And just in case you don't believe me, there's a close up of one of them. Merle is particularly known as a habitat for juvenile animals. And in this image, you can see it hosting juvenile fish. You'll remember earlier on, I told you that Merle was actually a red marine algae and there are at least three different species involved. Here's a photograph of a relatively rare one that occurs in Kingstown Bay in Connemara. Another unique habitat that we're fortunate to have in abundance in County Galway are seagrass meadows. Seagrass meadows are important for lots of reasons, but they also are host to a huge biodiversity, and in that regard, we need to look after them. Once again, I was involved in a project to map the location of seagrass beds through Connemara and County Galway. And here are some maps showing the distribution, shown by the green areas of different parts of County Galway, including Connemara, here we have Kilkiran Bay, and to many people's surprise, you don't have to go that far at all to see seagrass, as we actually do still have some in the southern part of Galway Bay, close to Galway City, at Island Eddy. The next series of slides show you some of the animals that typically occur amongst seagrass meadows, including the snake lox anemone. Dogfish are commonly encountered amongst seagrass meadows. These two sea slugs are known as sea hares. The peacock worm is a filter feeding worm and is commonly encountered in seagrass beds. Here in this image you can see quite a number of different burrowing species in the sand beneath the leaf blades. A collection of snake locks and enemies attached to the leaf blades of seagrass shoots. Here we have a thornback ray, likely foraging amongst the seagrass or possibly seeking to lay an egg case. Some more snake locks and enemies. Here we have some seagrass with an epiphyte, which is another plant growing on top of it. And in this image, you can see a close up of some more of those sea hares that we saw earlier. Sometimes seagrass can grow amongst other types of marine algae, and when that happens, it can form a very dense, almost impenetrable habitat that provides shelter for a much wider range of animals. This image, you can see a number of species that are typical of seagrass meadows where they grow beneath the leaf blades. Seagrass meadows are one of our most sensitive marine habitats. Globally, they are in huge decline. So we really do need to take care to avoid adding too many nutrients to the water or allowing too much sediment to run off that blocks out the light and stops it growing. The next habitat I'd like to show you about 
are sandy and muddy seabed habitats. Muddy habitats occur where there is extreme degrees of shelter and very little water movement. Sandy habitats, as we all know, occur in places typically where there's a lot of current or wave action, such as on beaches. The next series of slides show you some of the animals that occur on muddy and sandy seabed habitats, including burrowing anemones like this tiny little Edwardsia anemone. Also, we frequently have starfish and in this case, brittle stars. Some fish species such as the grey garnet are one of the more common fish that you'll come across on sandy seabeds. This guy is a burrowing prawn, also known as a Dublin Bay prawn. Many of you will have seen these. We can have creatures such as light bulb sea squirts. Swimming crabs are very common and are one of the animals that do all the housekeeping on muddy and sandy seabeds. Here we have a picture of the giant fireworks anemone taken in Rosquita Bay in Connemara. Another small burrowing worm anemone. A sand goby, a very common fish. And here we have fireworks and enemies with burrowing sea pens. And it's not unusual to see rays on sandy seabeds like this thornback ray, where they often come to forage. So the next habitat I'd like to tell you about are reefs. A reef is a seabed habitat that is made out of bedrock or boulders, or indeed the remains of animals such as oyster shells. The following slides show a range of animals typical of reefs, including here our most colourful fish, the male cuckoo wrasse. Crustaceans are found on reefs, including here the brown crab. Sea fans are common to the reefs of the Aran Islands, and here they grow larger than anywhere else in the country. In shallow waters, our reefs are often host to rich algal communities, which in turn provide great shelter and cover for a range of species, including fish and sessile animals. Here we see an image of a crawfish, or a spiny lobster as it's known to some, a one-time common inhabitant of our reefs, now, sadly, heavily overfished. The jewel anemone is a small anemone-like animal with rings of short tentacles, each tipped with a small colored or white blob. They're brightly colored and form dense carpets on rocks or other hard surfaces. Jewel anemones come in a wide range of color morphs and this green and yellow morph is particularly stunning. Norway pout is a small, short-lived fish species of the cod family. It lives at depths ranging from 15 to 250 meters where it prefers rocky habitat. Prawns are found in rock pools and shallow waters down to about 40 meters. Normally they hide in crevices or under stones. Common prawns are scavengers and will eat almost anything they find. Earlier I mentioned that reefs weren't always comprised of bedrock. This image shows a reef structure that's comprised of the remains of a community of worms. The common sun star is a type of starfish with 10 to 12 short arms that look like sun rays. The sun star is an echinoderm which means spiny skinned and it sure lives up to its name. Like Kilkiran Bay are home to some very, very sheltered reefs. And in these reefs, you will often find the densest aggregations of any marine life. Feather duster worms are polychaete, marine relatives of the earthworm. Their tentacles extend from the head of the worm and are used in both oxygen uptake and filter feeding. Some peaty waters of the Salt Lake near Clifton in County Galway are home to a wide range of marine species and it makes it an interesting place to explore. This image shows Ross Coral, a rare and brittle bryozoan that occurs in our offshore waters. This image is taken in Kilkiron Bay near Roskija and shows you the density of marine life that occurs on some of our sheltered reefs. This image is of a spider crab, which we came across on a dive in the wormhole or Polnabeist on Inishmore. 
So the final habitat that I'd like to cover today are our open waters. So let's take a closer look at what animals we can expect to find in our close nearshore open waters. Pollock is a common fish on our reefs and is a popular sport fishing species. We have two commonly encountered species of dolphins on our shores. One is the bottlenose dolphin, which we see here, and the other species, which is more common, is known as the common dolphin. Also known as the spiny dogfish, the spur dog is a predator that feeds on bony fish and sometimes even smaller sharks. It's a migratory species that spends the winter months in deep water and the summer months in our warm coastal waters. They often travel in large groups. Not many people would like to believe that jellyfish provide an essential ecosystem function, but they do. In these cases, they can be seen providing essential refuge to juveniles of a range of fish species. One of our more common offshore sharks in summer times are the blue shark, and nothing can beat swimming with some of these gentle creatures in the clear blue waters off the Aran Islands. Blue shark tend to arrive in our waters once it's warmed up to 14 degrees or so, and they spend the summer feeding in the near and offshore area where they pursue mackerel, scad, and a range of other fish species. In the autumn time, they gradually move offshore and further south. The minke whale is the second smallest species of baleen whale. In Galway Bay, you can be lucky to see one, especially in the autumn when they come inshore to feed on sprat and a range of other species. So we've reached the end of my presentation on the habitats and marine wildlife of our coastal seas. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the rich biodiversity of the West Coast. I certainly enjoyed showing you some photographs and videos that I've collected while exploring our coast in recent years. My hope is that by watching this video and by joining in on some of the other activities during the camp, people will be inspired to seek out and see the amazing marine wildlife that lies just off our shores for themselves. Thanks for watching.